good day. It is now the 26th day of May, 2021. I hope you're having a good day. It's a beautiful day here in Virginia. Um, one of the most common questions I get, they want me to do a video on HRT the or other high-speed tactical units. And, um, you know, I've been hesitant to do this for a number of reasons. Number one, it is not common that most agents, most people who join federal law enforcement uh, are not in these units. They're highly selective. And, um, and number two, you know, they're just, uh, again, they, they kind of mirror to a certain extent what the military does. But uh, so I'm going to do one today on HRT, uh, which is the FBI's hostage rescue team. And the first thing I'm going to do, answer a couple of very simple questions. You know, why do they even need a hostage, hostage rescue team? And if we go back to, the answer to this goes back to 1972, before any of you were born. But I had been born, okay, and I know what was going on. It was the Summer Olympics in Munich, Germany. And what happened was a group of terrorists, the Black September organization, got into the Olympic Village and they kidnapped the Israeli athletes. And what happened then was uh, a series of negotiations. The German police were not at all equipped to handle this. At the time, they had revolvers and shotguns, like every other police department. And at the airport, a massacre ensued. The Israeli athletes were largely massacred. Um, Israel then wisely extracted revenge on everyone who had planned this. They went out and over a period of the next 10 or 15 years, did targeted assassinations on people who had planned this. Uh, now we'll fast forward to the 1980s. 1984, the United States in Atlanta, we were hosting the Olympics and an FBI agent uh, wisely you know, thought, you know, we don't want the same thing to happen here. We really don't have a dedicated domestic law enforcement counterterrorism unit. And this was the birth of the HRT, the hostage rescue team. So the team began in 1984. It has continued since then. Uh, now you may ask, why do we need, again, military to do this when you have the Navy SEALs, you have Army Delta Force, you have all of these high speed teams? And the answer is this. Uh, number one, military units cannot operate domestically on US soil because of something that I alluded to in an earlier video, the Posse Comitatus Act. Number two, uh, there's totally different rules of engagement. Okay, when the Navy SEALs went in to get bin Laden in Pakistan, they basically shot everybody, including bin Laden, okay? Um, you can't do that in civilian law enforcement. There's laws that prohibit that. So there's an obvious need here. You need law enforcement uh, officers who are trained law enforcement officers, but with a high-speed tactical, uh, to fulfill a high-speed tactical requirement. So what I'm going to do now is put a video on, which shows, and I don't like these kind of videos because they're recruiting videos, but I'm gonna put it on anyway. We're gonna show what the, the unit uh, does because they you know, don't put out a lot of information. And after you've seen that, then I'm going to get into a, uh, a slideshow, if you will, on the requirements to join, the training and so on and so forth and then I'll do an assessment later. So right now let's watch the video put out by the FBI. Hey fellas, we're going to peel around in the woods.
ability to do uh, dive operations, subsurface delivery, waterborne, a full range of overland mobility, meaning we can go over land through the desert, uh, you know, arctical weather terrain with uh, the snowmobiles, four wheelers. We have gun trucks and all sorts of other platforms that allow us to access pretty much any environment here in the United States. Okay, and this is going to be on the, uh, particularly the HRT, its organization, and how to join. And uh, since really uh, about 1994, uh, the HRT, prior to that, from 83 to 94, it, it stood alone, but then after that, uh, there were two instances that uh, uh, were not well handled, and one being Ruby Ridge, Idaho, the second being Waco. And they came to the wise conclusion that uh, not only do you need operators, you also need uh, not just people who can put a bullet between somebody's eyes, but also you need negotiators, you need analysts, sometimes you need linguists, surveillance experts, a, a whole slew of different people. You just can't operate with operators alone because uh, in those two instances, it didn't work, okay? without getting into it. Now the HRT itself, again, it's established in 1983. It is the only tier one uh, law enforcement team, which means it's the equivalent of the Navy SEALs or Delta Force. Uh, it has the same capabilities. Again, military teams can't deploy in the US because of the Posse Comitatus Act, prohibits the use of law enforcement, military for civilian law enforcement. They participated in hundreds of uh, uh, high-end uh, security things and also uh, crises. There's about 100 members on several teams out of an agency of about 13,000, so it's not very big. Now, what do you have to do to join? First, you gotta be a special agent. And then once you're a special agent, uh, you complete a two-week selection process. And that selection process will determine whether you are able to go through the six-month training course. Now here is the purpose of the assessment. Number one is to see if you have the attributes. And to get in, first of all, you have to just pass a, a PT test and you should be able to max your entrance PT test. In other words, you should be able to run in maximum time. You shouldn't just be able to pass the test. You have to max it, in other words. So, you know, you should have a perfect score basically on your PT, PT test, even going into this. Now, once you go into it, it's a two-week assessment program. Uh, you'll be identified by number only. You receive no feedback from the instructors or from the graders who are members of the HRT team. And their purpose is to watch you and decide who they want to work with. And it's two weeks. You can drop during that two weeks. Or most likely, uh, and I hate to say this, they're most likely going to screen you out. Most likely you're going to be screened out. You're going to get minimal sleep, uh, intensive exercise, the purpose is to see how well you function under stress. And again, it's um, you're ID'd by a, a number and a color jersey. Day one begins with a pre-dawn PT test, which includes running, swimming, stair climbing with a 55 pound vest and a 35 pound battering ram. And uh, most are dropped within the two weeks. They, they make their selection of about eight or 10. Now the guy that used to live across the street moved before 9-11, he was an FBI HRT guy, but he told me one time, I'm going for two weeks, because each year they do this selection thing, and he participated in the uh, selection process, which is again, watching agents from all over the country who come to try out for this team. They choose who they want to work with, okay? And it's, uh, there's, you know, again, it, it's based on how well you function under stress, minimal sleep, maximum PT. Now, if you are selected, then you move here to Quantico, uh, Stafford, Virginia, right outside Quantico, and you go through a six-month course on tactics, combat marksmanship, a lot of fitness. Basically, it's the equivalent of Navy SEAL training without the surf. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time away from home in your training and in your assignment. About 80% of those who are selected are military or police operators, former military or police operators, okay? And the training includes scuba diving, rappelling out of helicopters, exposure to extreme climates, uh, tactical driving, 
close quarter fighting and jumping out of planes because you may have to infiltrate. And of course also your standard firearms, PT, raids, first aid. Um, so it's a six month very intense course. Um, you might get Sunday off and that's it. Okay, what about following basic course? Well then you join a team within the HRT and you'll specialize as either a breacher, a communicator, or a medic. And some receive additional training, as such as sniper, which is done right here at Quantico, uh, explosive ordnance disposal, or high altitude, low opening parachute infiltration. Okay, um, and there is an HRT tactical aviation unit. They have their own helicopters. They're staffed by HRT special agent pilots. They use mainly military helicopters. Now, what kind of person would succeed in HRT? The same type of person who would succeed in Delta Force or the Navy SEALs. Okay? You've got to be in outstanding physical condition. And I would say male or female, if you can't run a mile in six minutes after a full PT test, you're not going to make it. If you're not able to do 100 perfect push-ups, you're not going to be able to make it. If you're not able to run up and down the stairs with a 55-pound vest and a 35-pound sledgehammer and do it for a long period of time, you're not going to be able to make it. If you're not able to function for two to three days without sleep on minimal food and water, you're not going to be able to make it. Okay, it's it, very few people can get into this. Many are called, few are chosen. Okay, and most importantly, you know, you got to be able to work with and bond with team members. Now, let's say this is your goal. You want to join the HRT. Well, first thing you've got to do, this is a plan that I would follow. Complete college, get your degree, with particularly a degree that's needed by the FBI. Secondly, I would enlist in the military. I would join the Navy SEALs, Special Forces, uh, and go through their training. And if you can't make it through their training, you're not gonna make it through this. And then once you are done, then the FBI has a special recruitment program that recruits former military operators uh, or current military operators who are looking to get out. You would then be selected same process as joining the FBI. You have to go through the academy. You go to your initial assignment, you know, I don't know, Evansville, Indiana, make your arrest. And then after one year, they'll, they'll have you try out for the HRT, you'll make it. And then you go through the HRT training and then you're in HRT. But again, they lean very heavily toward former Navy SEALs, Army Special Forces, Army Rangers, you know, Air Force Pararescue. If you're in that type of a thing, you know, you're, you're probably going to uh, do good at this. But again, for this, many are called, few are chosen. And now we come to the final part of this video. You know, do I recommend it? Of course I recommend it. If you're in good shape and you can get through this, I recommend it. It is not the SWAT team. Okay, the SWAT team, they have in all 56 divisions. The DEA now has a similar team based uh, about four blocks from my house. It used to be a bowling alley. I liked it a lot better when it was a bowling alley. But they moved the FAST team, which had been a DEA program that went overseas, and they, they now created a CERT team, which is a special response team, but they also train the DEA SWAT members as well. But um, again, uh, who do I recommend go into this? You know, you're either cut out for it or you're not. Would I be cut out for it? No. You know, if I can tell you flat out, this is not for me. Uh, but if you are, great. Now, you know, again, my from my perspective, if you want to do this, I would have done it in the military or, you know, and just stayed in the military. Uh, because, but, it, but again, you know, if you're in law enforcement, this is a highly specialized thing. And my friend who had been on this lived across the street. I have another friend who's now in Seattle who was on it. Uh, he was a former Marine officer, but this guy had no military service at all. But he did great in it. Uh, I know several former members of it, but no sensitive government information has been used in making this video. No classified or sensitive information was used, and uh, everything I've used is open source. Okay, So uh, hopefully this has been informative. Thank you for the kind comments that you've got you, and you've provided in, in uh, helping me with this channel. And uh, if you like it, subscribe and comment. If you think it was BS, you know, put that in your, your comments and I'll send you a very kind note, okay? Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna do one on CIRG, which is the 
Critical Incident Response Group, which goes with the HRT. That's where you have your behavior analysts, your uh, interviewers, your uh, specialized uh, negotiators and things like that. Because again, you can't just have you know, tactical people. You have to have a lot of people who can support the mission. So uh, hopefully you liked it and um, uh, talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day.